hi guys welcome back to my channel and in this video i will be explaining the wiring uh, the connections the rpm the power rating and all of an alternator so as you can see here this is a 720 watts 60 amperes alternator with uh, the maximum voltage of 14.4 volts controlled by the regulator at the back of it and a usual uh, low voltage of around 12 volts Okay, so guys, uh, this is the place where uh, the pulley is mounted, uh, on which uh, uh, the belt is mounted. Okay, and if you have, if you have to open it, then of course you will need a spanner and an Allen key. Uh, now, for those of you who have already tried uh, to open alternators previously, would know that it is really hard to open an alternator, especially from the pulley section. These are really, uh, really, really tight. I mean, so tight that I broke my Allen keys twice. So anyways, for this alternator, I will be cutting the pulley and the nut here with an angle grinder since it's not opening and I have to modify it into a self-excited alternator generator. So starting with the connections part first. Okay. So all the connections are at the back of the alternator. So first is the negative output now there are two cases for an alternator first is the electricity that is fed to the alternator which is going to excite the alternator and the second is the energy delivered or generated by the alternator that is extracted from the alternator so first the extraction part so uh, for the extraction part the entire body of an alternator is the negative actually except for these parts okay like uh, if i want to get uh, the negative out of an alternator i can place uh, the output for the negative over here or here or here or even on the pulley since it's metallic and it is connected to the body so it is also negative now the positive output terminal positive output terminal is uh, quite unique and different from the others the longest screw you can see the longest screw present at the back of the alternator is the positive terminal i mean uh, the positive output will come on this longest terminal and the negative output will come at the back of the alternator on the body of the alternator sorry okay so let's say that your alternator is running at really high rpm and you want to light up this incandescent 12 volts bulb so what you will be doing is you will connect one terminal of the bulb to the positive terminal of the alternator which is this long screw okay and the other terminal to the body of the alternator like here or uh, here which is going to be the negative okay and then your bulb will light up so this was the output part of the alternator now an alternator has two parts the armature and the rotor so first the rotor part as you can see here these are the teeth and these two are the slip rings to which the brushes are connected now the brushes feed electricity to this rotor or the field and the electricity that is fed to this rotor activates the electromagnets in between these two sets of teeth okay the upper teeth and the lower teeth set now let's say positive is given here and negative is given here so let's say that the upper set of teeth becomes the north and the lower set of teeth becomes the south so it is going to be somewhere like south north south north okay so this is a uh, quite an important part how beautifully the electromagnet is magnetizing the rotor poles the electromagnet is uh, placed horizontally and it is activating the magnets on the sides activating the poles on the sides and there is another important fact if we increase the number of teeth here like if we are going to reduce the size of one teeth uh, of each teeth then we can have more number of teeth which will mean more number of poles more number of poles means less rpm for the alternator to generate same amount of voltage and current so like if uh, your alternator was initially working at 
1400 rpm for generating 12 volts if we increase uh, the number of teeth here we can generate the same 12 volts at just 700 rpm now this is the part uh, the rotor part which takes in electricity from outside while the armature that i will be sharing after this is the part that will generate and produce electricity that we can use to light up halogens bulbs or recharge the connected battery that is exciting this rotor or field so guys now comes the armature part now the armature part of an alternator as you can see here there is a little bit uh, there is a lot of grease over uh, the armature winding so it is uh, barely visible I will clean it up for you at least clean it enough so that you can see what's I mean where is the winding okay really creased up now the armature winding is really thick as you can see and it is responsible for generating large amount of current and less voltage the voltage maximum voltage is only 12 volts to 14.4 volts while uh, the maximum current is up to 60 amperes which is regulated by the regulator at the back of the alternator the voltage the armature winding is in three phase and it is star connected and how i know that okay you can see here there are three wires this is the white wire this is the white wire and this is the white wire these are three now if it was delta connected it would only be three but if there is a fourth wire like you can see here this is the fourth white wire which is away from these three wires this is common of these three so a uh, star has a common neutral point while these three are the phases with a phase difference of 120 degrees another three phase voltage that is generated by this alternator is rectified with the help of this three phase rectifier ac to dc converter and also there is voltage regulator mounted uh, with this uh, uh, rectifier to prevent the voltage from going beyond 14.4 volts which would of course otherwise harm the battery that is connected with the alternator since the batteries cannot go beyond 14.4 volts otherwise they will get damaged so for that reason it has voltage regulator and uh, you see this this is the slip ring part of the field winding or the rotor which i explained a few moments back for the rotor and uh, these are the two wires you see here red and blue these feed the brushes and the brushes are connected to the slip rings that feed the electromagnet of the rotor okay so guys that would be all about the rotor the field the connections and all thank you so much for watching this video if you have any queries feel free to ask them in comments and uh, this was the intro video i will come up with the practical electricity generation part in my next video thank you so much for watching it hey everyone welcome back to my channel so as you can see in front of you a car alternator this is a small one i think it's around 250 watts and this is the label Bosch F002 G10 648 G1 S1 14 volts 20 to 43 amperes made in India 903 okay and so I'm a bit confused about its power rating since the current rating is given as 20 to 43 amperes at 14 volts so if it's 20 amperes then it is 280 watts but if it's 43 amperes then it is somewhere around 600 to 700 watts and I can't see it's possible since the generator is really small but then it's a Bosch alternator first I'm going to show you that uh, according to my calculations this alternator is not working so I'm going to open it up and see the problem and then correct that problem and bring it to the working mode again and yes i bought it very cheap for around uh, 250 rupees that is around uh, four dollars okay so let's open it up
So as you can see this portion is out and uh, this box is for the brushes I guess. Uh, the brushes are uh, connected to the slip rings so if there are any brushes I mean if they are not worn out so I'm going to check them by connecting 15 volts DC supply okay so I'm going to give a 15 volts DC supply to this and this terminal to feed the brushes and check if there is a little bit magnetic locking on this router if the magnetic locking is present then the alternator is working fine otherwise I will have to take out this regulator and check if the brushes are present at all ok so this is the 15 volts DC supply from a laptop charger so one yeah it is parking but no magnetic locking ok let's check here Sparking again, no locking. So yeah, I think uh, there is some problem with the regulator or the brushes are worn out. So I will have to take this out as well. Ok so guys uh, the brushes were present this is one brush and this is the other slot and here is the brush and the spring so it was like this yeah something like this but it's coming out because the second one spring is very powerful and this also looks good the slip rings so let's check where the problem is why the field is not getting activated okay so guys now I am going to touch uh, the 15 volts terminals directly to the slip rings you can see and then check if there is a magnetic locking okay one second yeah connection has been made and there is no magnetic locking at all so the problem becomes clear that there is something wrong with the field winding of this alternator that is the rotor field so let's open it up completely Yeah, but this one is not going to come out uh, I will have to take out the regulator first so guys this one is an extremely jammed screw it is not opening so let's see what I can do to open it ok so this is a rubber strip yeah but, but it is too big Well I saw a video on YouTube where they opened uh, a jammed screw that was completely worn out from the top by placing a rubber So how uh, I am going to open it Well there is another way I think I don't have to take this out I will take the head off Ok
Yeah, it is coming out. Oh yes. So finally I have uh, taken out the field winding of the alternator. So guys as you can see that the alternator is completely open now. Uh, this is the armature winding that generates electricity. Okay. And this is the field winding. You can see the brush contacts, the fan, the pulley and, and the teeth like field winding. These are actually the poles. So uh, I'm still on the issue where the problem is with this field winding. So let's remove this and concentrate on this one. So to figure out the problem I will have to take out this gap. So let's remove it. Mm, yeah, the gap is removed. from where I can see this is one wire yeah I will bring it close yeah so this is one wire so it is coming from here and then behind the bearing and this is a wire that is going to the field Let's see if it is worn out from somewhere. Actually, I don't think it is. This is the second wire. It's going out from here. And then to the bearing. There is some problem with the winding. I will have to test the winding again. So guys this is the field winding and this is the 15 volts DC supply from my laptop charger. I am going to give the supply to these slip rings and check if these uh, poles get electromagnetized. Okay. So at present uh, there is almost uh, no magnetism. Okay, one wire is here and the other one is here. Yeah, it's not working, which means there is some problem with the windings of the field. So I was checking the problem and then I found. Yeah, there is a slight problem with this one. This wire has come out. Okay, I will show it to you. Yeah, you can see. This wire is out. It is not connected. And there is this, uh, the other part of it. Yeah, I think you can see it here. Yeah. Okay, so I will just uh, uh, show you that it's uh, working otherwise if I connect it directly from here yeah you can see the spark which show which means that the connection has been made yeah you can see so yeah uh, the problem is this broken wire uh, so if I can rejoin it back then the field will start working and so will the alternator so let's see if I can do that because it is really difficult the wire is uh, barely visible and I will have to take this off if I am not able to solder this from here okay so let's do that
now the connection of the field winding has been removed from the slip rings as you can see the wire is here and this was the solder ok so let's proceed to the next step
ओके सो गाइस एज यू कैन सी आई हैव सोल्डर्ड दिस न्यू वायर येलो इन कलर एंड आई एम प्लेसिंग बैक द स्लिप रिंग्स एंड आई हैव एंड आई हैव प्लेस्ड बैक द बियर रिंग दिस इज द न्यू वायर एंड सो इज दिस वन बोथ आर येलो इन कलर ओके नाउ आई हैव टू प्लेस द स्लिप रिंग बैक एंड सोल्डर दीज टू वायर्स टू द स्लिप रिंग ओके सो लेट्स डू दैट Also, this wire is shorter one. Okay, so guys, I have soldered the wires to the slip ring. As you can see, this is uh, the lower wire and this is the upper wire. And now it's time to check if the connections from the field winding are made to the slip ring. Okay, so this is five volts DC supply from a mobile charger. And let's see if there is spark. Okay. So as you can see that the connections are perfect, and now all I have to do is place it back in, and the alternator should start working. As per us.
Okay, so guys, I placed uh, this back as it was before, and now this should fit in easily. Okay so guys it took me a lot of time to do the repairing work for this alternator but finally I was successful and also I didn't want to invest any money in the repairing of this alternator so I figured out a few shortcuts because of which I didn't have to purchase a new regulator or the brushes so what I did was these two contact points are for the brushes and this is the red wire and this is the brief, uh, this is the black wire they both are connected directly to the brushes that are going to feed electricity to the field winding of this alternator which is the rotor so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give an input supply of uh, 5 to 15 volts on these two terminals so these are going to directly activate the rotor field winding of this alternator and the field winding and the field winding will thus be magnetized and when i will rotate uh, the shaft that will induce emf of this alternator that will finally appear on this terminal as the positive and the body of the alternator which is the negative in the form of voltage and current that can be measured with the help of this multimeter okay so first i am going to do some multimeter test so for that Yeah, I have this uh, 5 volts mobile charge that I'm going to use to give supply to the brushes here. So the red is for the red one. And the black is for the black one. Okay, one more thing. You can see the spark, which means the connection is made. And now there is a little bit magnetic locking which indicates that the indicates that the field winding has been successfully magnetized. Okay so guys I disconnected uh, one of the supply because I had to connect the output terminals of this alternator to the multimeter. And for a second when I will connect uh, this terminal to the uh, to this terminal of the brush the transformer will act like uh, the alternator will act like a transformer and you should see for a second some amount of voltage indicated on the display okay yeah you can see 0.65 volts yeah 1.53 volts and now it is zero because uh, for generation of electricity flux needs to keep uh, flux needs to keep on changing okay you can see the simple hand rotation is generating electricity 0 0.32 volts 0 0.57 0 0.73 and if i go a bit harder on it 1.32 1.50 1 1.28 1 1.74 yeah, okay so it's time to do some rope testing which i'm going to wound on this pulley Go. So you saw that the voltage was uh, above 6 point something volts and the voltage was low because I am not feeding it its rated input voltage which is 12 volts that is fed to a normal car alternators that is 12 volts to 14 volts and I am only giving it 5 volts of supply from a mobile charger so that's the reason so anyways now I am going to connect an actual 12 volts load bulb and then we will see the test oh, actually before that I am going to just perform the current testing let's see how much amps I can generate 
Okay, so once again, guys. Okay. Yeah, it was somewhere around 4.5 amperes. And the voltage was uh, around 6 point something. So it's uh, above 25 watts that I could generate with my hand power. So now I'm going to connect an actual load coil. Okay, so everything has been connected. Okay, go. I think the wire is not connected correctly. We'll have to do some improvement to that. Okay, so one wire to the positive terminal and the other wire to the body of the alternator which is the negative. Now it should work. Okay, go. Yeah, so as we saw that the bulb glue and for the same reason it didn't glow too bright because uh, the feed supply uh, is only 5 volts from a mobile charger so I'm going to increase the input voltage supply to this alternator I'm going to connect a laptop charger instead of a mobile charger okay so guys this is a 15 volts laptop charger Toshiba and I'm going to use the output voltage of this charger to feed the field winding of this alternator okay Okay, you should see the sparking. Sparking is pretty good. It's a bit improper. Okay. And okay. So yeah, this much is fine. Now I have to wound the thread and pull it. And you should see the bulb glow to its full brightness. Yeah, the magnetic locking has also increased. Okay, go. Yeah. You can see. Okay, go. So guys, as you can see that the alternator is working perfect now. So all I had to do, if you are... Uh, voltage regulator has stopped working or there is some issue with it connect the brushes directly and take uh, two wires out to feed the electricity from an, ex from an external source and to generate electricity out from the output terminals of the alternator and it should work fine yeah as soon as you will disconnect the field uh, supply it will rotate easily and freely because there is no magnetic locking but when you will connect the supply the higher the power, uh, the higher the voltage and current, the stronger will be the magnetism and uh, stronger will be the magnetic locking. Okay. So guys, I'm going to go for this thread testing one, once more because initially I was using a shorter thread. So you weren't able to see the bulb glow for a longer period of time. But now I have extended the thread size. Okay.
Ja. Okay, so the magnetic locking has been made. Okay, go. Yeah, I think this was this time it was a bit longer. So guys, uh, that was all about the video. How you should repair if your field winding is damaged, if your brushes are damaged, if your voltage regulator is damaged. So guys, that would be all about the video. Thank you so much for watching it. Please hit like and don't forget to share and subscribe. Thank you. Hey everyone. In this video, I am going to excite this alternator without the help of any battery or capacitor bank or DC generator. So to self-excite uh, this alternator without any of those additional equipments, what I have to do is I have to couple the rotating field to the armature of this alternator. So guys, this one is a 100 volts DC motor and this is a 12 volts alternator 600 VA and both of them are mechanically connected with the help of this pulley and belt system okay so guys this is an electric bike battery charger and it can produce up to 59 volts and a current of 2.7 amperes so which is uh, around 60 volts so i'm going to feed uh, the dc motor that is going to run the alternator with this dc source okay so guys these red and blue wires are connected to the brushes of the rotor of this alternator so i have connected these uh, wires from the brushes directly to the output terminals of this alternator so what this will do is when i will feed electricity to these brushes to excite its rotor and rotate its shaft the shaft will induce emf in the armature of this alternator and the armature will start generating current and that generated current will start a cycle of feeding electricity to these brushes again and so the cycle will continue so even if I will remove uh, the feeding power supply to these brushes still the alternator will continue to produce electricity because of self excitation so the first step will be for a moment I will feed electricity to these terminals the red and the blue which are connected to the brushes which will in turn excite the rotor of this alternator and that rotor will induce EMF in the armature and then armature will generate current which will then again feed electricity back to the brushes and then brushes will again excite the rotor and then the cycle will keep on going so after the motor gets into that cycle we can remove the connected energy source to these brushes and this alternator will still continue to produce electricity and this process will be self excitation so okay let's get on with it these four crocodile clips are actually connecting the armature wires to this rectifier and voltage regulator since i removed this voltage regulator and i didn't solder these wires back to the voltage regulator so i'm using these crocodile clips to connect these wires to this voltage regulator okay this is a 5 volts mobile charger with which i am going to feed electricity to the brushes which in turn is going to excite the rotor of this alternator and after the alternator gets self excited i will remove the supply which is this mobile charger and the alternator will still continue to generate electricity like a permanent magnet generator okay so i have turned on the terminals you can see that it is indicating power full charging okay so first i am going to connect the mobile charger terminals to excite the rotor of this alternator okay so how we are going to do that this long screw is the positive terminal and this is the red wire and red wire is for positive so i am going to connect this red wire here okay and since the armature winding and the brushes are connected in parallel so so this red wire is feeding electricity to this red wire of the rotor of brushes and this is the black wire the black is for the negative which is the ground wire and the entire body of alternator is always negative so we can connect it anywhere we can connect this black wire anywhere on this body 
okay so yeah the black wire is connected and the red wire is connected so the field is now excited now i'm going to connect a multimeter to indicate the generated voltage by this alternator okay so the positive will go here okay so first i'm going to start this dc motor so this contains 60 volts dc supply that i'm going to feed this motor okay first wire is there now the second wire Okay, so it seems that the bike charger is not meant for operating this DC motor. So I have to come come up with something else. Now, since the e-bike charger did not work, I am going to use these two laptop chargers and I am going to connect them in series. This one is a 20 volts and this one is 15 volts. So together they are going to make uh, around 35 volts, and uh, and I'm going to feed that voltage to the DC motor, which in turn is going to rotate the shaft of the alternator. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to connect the wires to the DC motor. So all the terminals are connected. Uh, so this way I am feeding it 35 volts DC. So now I am going to plug in the power supply and you should see the DC motor alternator system start. Okay, so the system has started but it is slow. I am going to increase the speed by plugging this one too. So you can see that the speed has increased and now I am going to remove the excitation terminal of the mobile charger. So yeah I have removed it. Now let's measure the voltage generated by this alternator after we have disconnected the mobile charger that was exciting the rotor of this alternator so as I said that entire body of the alternator is the negative so I am going to touch this terminal to the body and you should see the you should see some voltage reflected and it will not be 12 volts since uh, I am feeding this DC motor only 35 volt and it has to operate at 100 volts so let's see how much voltage it is producing so yeah it is 4.84 like this but yes it is self excited it is generating electricity without any mobile charger connected and the voltage is shooting sometimes okay So as you saw that I removed the terminals of the mobile charger and they are right here and that alternator is operating and I will show you the generated voltage again just for a surety. Okay. You can see that it is still generating voltage. Now some practical demonstration with this 12 volts motorcycle bulb.
yeah so it is generating electricity and is completely self excited so this is how the self excitation system of an alternator is going to work and of course if i could have been able to supply this dc motor with its rated voltage that was 100 volts this alternator would be producing around 14.48 volts that is required for charging your car batteries and all but the system actually cleared my point that we can self excite an alternator without a power bank or an additional battery or an additional dc generator attached to the alternator to excite its field okay so i will show you the operating view from the back look no other connections are provided the entire system is like this only connection is to the dc motor that is connected only through the belt to the pulley of this alternator and let me show you the generated voltage again with the help of the multimeter okay body of the alternator yeah i can also touch it to the wife yeah entire wife is also excited with the negative polarity so yeah it is generating electricity without its field being excited so guys that would be all about the video thank you so much for watching it if you like my video please hit like and don't forget to share and subscribe for the upcoming future videos thank you